Okay, okay, okay. Today, we're talking about the high watermark system, which I can't highlight apparently. All right, so if you watched my last video, uh, what there is to do at level 60, I mentioned how people were farming their, their watermark of their gear in like an inefficient manner. And this post kind of confirmed some of the ideas I had. And so now that I'm more sure of it, I, um, I'm going to go over this post and then afterwards I'm going to show you kind of the order at which you should be farming like specific elite zones because like I theorized having 10 different groups at Mirkgard is not efficient. All right. So I'm going to go through this, uh, in case you've, you've read it already, I'm going to try to speed read it and just go over like the important parts. All right. Hi everyone. Many of you have been asking about the nuances of the high watermark system and I'm here to help. If you don't know what the high, high, if you don't know what the high if you don't know what the high watermark system does, it's a system that kicks in when your character reaches level 60 and ultimately governs the power of gear drops you receive as you venture into the more dangerous areas of the world and fight powerful enemies. So when an enemy or container drops a piece of gear for you, it rolls on its gear score. So saying enemy or container confirms that you are going to increase your watermark from both chests and monster drops which is just something not everyone was sure about so they confirm that it rolls on its gear score during your leveling experience the gear score naturally progresses with your level so as long as you're fighting enemies at or above your level you're getting drops that are in in a power range that is good for your level when you reach the level cap this mechanic changes a bit at 60 you gain an upper gear score limit on drops that gradually increase as more powerful drops appear for you. So if this is worded precisely, uh, it does talk about uh, you gain an upper gear score limit. Uh, some people have been saying like uh, Lazarus and Genesis isn't really giving good drops. And I'm wondering if that has to do with going to those places when your gear score is too low. Uh, because there is a grad, there is supposed to be a gradual increase as more powerful drops appear for you. I wonder if being in an area that is like out of your upper gear score limit is actually hindering you more than it's helping you. So it says this upper limit is per item type, which is something we already knew. For armor, it's based on the slot type, e.g. helmet, chest armor, ring, uh, etc. And for weapons, it's based on the weapon type, sword, hammer, musket, etc. Only item drops affect your high water mark. Uh, the moment the item drops, your relevant high water mark is increased. You don't even need to pick the item up. Crafting an item or buying one from the trading post will not give you an increase, but it can be a great way to give yourself an edge and search for more powerful gear in the more dangerous areas of the game. I also want to mention that they, you know, saying that the gear score system changes once you hit level 60 kind of confirms that any gear under 525 is honestly just worthless. It should not hold any value in any way other than like maybe like harvesting tools. But after that, like certain things are, um, gonna start gaining some value here uh you see they mentioned like buying things from the trading post and stuff like that which is uh something to consider right because if you want to talk about how long it takes a 591 gear score then you also have to compare uh people who are running just one to two bosses that they know they can do versus people who can clear entire areas like a lot faster um you might save a considerable amount of time by crafting your own gear and, you know, that was kind of what my plan is if you saw my last video. Not all enemies and containers, including event reward containers from Outpost Rush, War Invasion, etc. are created equal in the case of the high watermark system. While you always have a small chance to see a high, higher watermark increase when defeating a level 60 plus creature or searching con a container in a level 60 plus landmark, each level beyond 60 has a soft upper limit on the likelihood of of an HWM increase. Similarly, event reward containers will respect your current higher watermark and also have a small chance of increasing it. So you see, this is this actually is confirming what I'm saying about um, Genesis and Lazarus. I think that people went into it with a low a lower watermark than they really needed to be able to actually start getting the the 600 gear score items that they're saying don't exist. What this means is that while you reliably see a watermark increase up to gear score 530 when defeating level 61 enemies, your chances of seeing something beyond 530 from a level 61 enemy is significantly lower than it is from a level 62 enemy. Level 64 plus enemies are capable of relying, reliably dropping gear up to GS 600, which is straight up 
pretty much a lie uh reliably dropping one thing that i confirm is people are not seeing 600 gear score um items at a frequent rate at all from these areas but um you know part of me wonders you know they're, they're putting this out and they're talking about how the watermark system is supposed to be working but maybe there are some bugs uh still that they have to work out uh, but, you know, we have to take them for their word right now and kind of think out like uh, some of the theories I'm, I'm mentioning and see if uh, see if they hold true or what. Uh, the system isn't fully random either. Each time you defeat a level 60 plus enemy and don't receive a gear item that increases its watermark type, you are slightly more likely to see an increase the next time. Now, I want to talk about this because a lot of people feel like this is BS also because uh, people are having a long time increasing their watermark. So I have to go into the theory that they're they're farming a place that's too high of a level for what their gear score is. Uh, you're also killing things slower if you're in that position. So maybe it feels like it's not reliably happening or not happening quick enough. Um, but if this is as they're saying it is, I like it because if you've ever played like a different MMO that is just based off of like straight RNG, uh, everyone has this like copium response where like if uh, if an item is one in 1000 then that means that the 1000 kill that you do it, like guarantees the item that you're looking for when it's not really how it is if an item is one in 1000 you could literally kill millions and never see one it's always rng but this seems like it has some type of a system to um to help you kind of get things at a, at a more regular rate so a lot of people feel like farming watermark is really slow in this game and it's a, it's a grind to make people like play more but honestly compared to some other games uh, apart from the whole binding items thing I, th I think that's so whack but apart from that i think that if this mechanic is actually working as intended and everything that it actually does foster like a quicker increase and more reliable rate at increasing your gear score so additionally, some enemies such as those found in elite landmarks and expeditions have a higher base chance of dropping items that increase your watermark. Level 60 plus named enemies are even more likely to drop watermark increasing items and expedition bosses will always drop an item that increases your watermark. I wonder, some people have contra contradicting thoughts on this and that's what makes me wonder, are they out of their gear score zone? Are, are they biting off more than they can chew, right? Some of you may feel that competing for drops from powerful enemies in the open world is suboptimal in crowded areas, and you're right. That's what I was saying. When lots of disparate, disparate groups are all attacking the same enemy, there is a smaller chance that those groups will see drop. And this is exactly why I decided to go crafting instead, because there was no one farming 60 areas. They were all farming Mirk Guard, and there were 30 to 50 people there, and it just did not feel efficient, and so I left. If you want to maximize your chances of getting watermark increase in a more controlled environment, expeditions are a great way to do it. Garden of Genesis and Lazarus Instrumentality are full of elite monsters to fight, and the bosses guarantee that you'll see an increase every time they drop a gear item for you. So, some people are saying that this doesn't seem to be true, and I'm, I'm going to repeat. Maybe it's because they're doing it so slow that it doesn't feel reliable, it doesn't feel like it's frequently happening, and... Uh, Maybe when they get their gear score up, it will be more reliable and feel better. We have to wait and see or uh, find out if that's a bug or, or what's going on. We know that tuning orbs for those expeditions are particularly time consuming to craft right now. So we're in the process of adjusting tuning orb crafting requirements. We expect to release an update for tuning orbs sometime in November. This is something you guys really got to comment and let me know what you think about this. Uh, personally, I feel like all the stuff that goes into making a tuning orb should be tradable and if it's all tradable then if it's still hard to make i think it's actually a good thing i think it's good to make it hard for people to farm certain dungeons by requiring like stone cutting levels and requiring that you gather certain items i just think that why can't we just sell every component and sell the tuning orb and just have it be part of the market as like a place for people to sink their gold I hate the whole bind on equip and bind on pickup mechanics in this game. I think they take away from people working together and uh, I, I don't like them. So anyways, after this, um, you can see the, the top reply, hi, watermark is a lie. So I went through some of that and kind of uh, thought about all that, which kind of brought me to the theories I explained. But apart from that, uh, I'll bring you to the map. So I did a little map. Yeah, it's a little sloppy. You know, the handwriting and the circles aren't perfect. But, you know, I, I drew it up quick, man. Give me a break. All right. And this is uh, this is kind of what they confirmed and what I had already kind of theorized. 
which is the different elite zones that you should be focusing at different uh, gear score watermark uh, points. So I have at the bottom Mangled Heights and Caminus. Mangled Heights would be here on the west side of Great Cleave. And Caminus would be here right at the south side of Shattered Mountain. Which I say you should go between those places until about 525 gear score or 530. And then you should go to Imperial Palace and Malevolence, which are the twos labeled. I just realized my ones and my twos look so much alike. But the twos are, are these over here. And this one down here at Evscale Reach near the Dynasty entrance at 549 to 577 gear score uh you want to move on to this place on west shattered mountain which is a scorched mine or down here in reek water a uh, forecastle drift and then once you are at about 577 gear score that is when implementing mirk guard runs and eternal pool down here in reek water and all the way in the south end of reek water uh the siren stand and then I think once you get to 591, that's when you should be focusing Lazarus and Genesis because that is when the gear score increases should be more frequent by like from what I'm taking from the dev post. Uh, one thing I'll mention is, so once you get to like 525 gear score, let's say, so you're going to Imperial Palace and Malevolence, uh, why not swing back around and hit Mangled Heights and Caminus again? Because you're still getting all those chests, elite chests, boss kills, and I think going through each of these zones instead of just focusing mirror guard is also beneficial because you start learning more places where there's Orichalcum, the chests, Ironwood, all of the high level resources that are hard to find. You're going to be able to access a lot of them by going through all these different uh, zones. And also elite chests are only, uh, they only spawn every 24 hours. So getting the elite chests from every zone on the 24 hour cooldown, I think is a good idea. But we'll see how that goes when i hit like the 600 gear score limit uh i'll start to like kind of roll back and see um if mangled heights and, and caminus and stuff like that still feel worth it to me but right now i i think it makes sense just to pick up the orichalcum just to pick up the chest and stuff like that so i think that's everything and that's cool i did it in a timely manner um guys hit subscribe if you want uh to follow a channel that tries its best not to clickbait you and tries its best not to just copy what someone else says or regurgitate some information without actually testing it uh some people have had gear score videos up for like a month already and uh for me i mean i i watched them and i tried myself and some of the things just weren't quite adding up and i like to just wait until things are confirmed or until i can kind of test things myself before i actually believe anybody and for that reason i think my channel should have a a strong core of reliable information that you know is true, that you know isn't outdated. I don't have to go back and delete videos or anything like that because unless it's completely changed or, or bugged, um, everything should be accurate. Like I'm not, I haven't talked about the 525 faction gear because yeah, it's really good. It's probably the best in slot right now, but it's bugged. So I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm not gonna talk about how brilliant gems are bugged and, and how you should actually use flawed and uh, or regular gems right now because because I don't care. I'm not gonna spend my time or waste my energy like worrying about like little bugs um instead i'm just gonna hope that they actually get fixed so <laughs> um if they don't actually get fixed then then you know i end up being a fool but uh i'm kind of relying on amazon to this sounds silly but i'm relying on amazon to fix this stuff in a timely manner so that skipping over like the bugs and the pvp armor will actually be a good decision um yeah so have a good day